The film begins with a young couple, Jim and his girlfriend Kat, waking up together in Taipei. As they wake up, Jim asks Kat not to go to work today, but she refuses, saying she has to go. She then reminds him about their upcoming trip to Kenting, something Jim had forgotten. He explains that a friend has asked for his help on a job involving a German ad agency, and the pay is too good to pass up. Jim apologizes, explaining that he really needs the money, which leaves Kat frustrated since she rarely takes time off from work. Shortly after, Jim turns on the news, where a doctor is discussing the Alvin virus. The doctor talking about the virus states that experts are terrified of its mutation potential. He then explains that the dormant protein chains in Alvin are similar to rabies. The doctor warns the public to take the outbreak seriously, saying Alvin is a real threat to public health. While Jim heads to the balcony for fresh air, he spots an elderly woman on a nearby rooftop and calls out to check if she's all right. She slowly turns toward him, revealing her blood-soaked clothes. Before Jim can react, she vanishes the moment he glances away to talk to Kat. A bit shaken, Jim then chats with his neighbor, Mr. Lin, from his balcony. Noticing that Mr. Lin seems under the weather, Jim suggests he should visit the hospital. But Mr. Lin brushes it off, saying the doctors will just send him home to rest. He also dismisses the news about the virus, claiming it's all a hoax. After their conversation, Jim says goodbye to Mr. Lin, charges his phone, and heads out with Kat to the train station. On the way, they notice police officers arresting a man, seemingly involved in a recent fatal incident. Eventually, Jim and Kat arrive at the train station, where Jim reassures her that he'll make it up to her by cooking dinner later. After seeing her off, Jim heads back home and notices the same police car from earlier, but now its doors are wide open and the officers are nowhere in sight. Feeling uneasy, he stops by a diner to grab something to eat. While there, he spots the same old woman from the rooftop, now covered in blood with dark, eerie eyes. She suddenly spits on a customer before throwing boiling oil onto the vendor. Chaos erupts as the customer, who was spat on, turns violent and repeatedly stabs his friend in the neck, terrifying everyone around. Jim quietly backs away in shock and steps outside, just in time to see the old woman get hit by a passing car. However, the driver seems just as erratic as the woman in the crazed diner customer, making it clear that they've all been infected by something. As the situation spirals out of control, Jim runs for his life with the infected hot on his heels. He manages to reach his apartment and locks himself inside, immediately trying to call Kat. Turning on the TV, he finds every channel broadcasting the same emergency alert, except for one that oddly plays a cartoon. Soon, Jim hears a chilling announcement from outside, ordering all men to report to the district office. Shockingly, the announcer casually mentions that the men will be castrated, while the women will be assaulted in the streets. This sends Jim into a panic, especially concerned for Kat's safety. He quickly texts her to ask where she is, but while focused on his phone, he fails to notice someone approaching from the balcony. Jim is too caught up texting Kat, telling her what's going on and that he'll come to get her. To notice the danger behind him. When he finally realizes someone is there, he turns around just in time to see Mr. Lin, now infected, lunging at him with a pair of garden shears. Jim barely manages to grab the blades, but in the struggle, two of his fingers get cut off. In pain, Jim kicks Mr. Lin away, but to his horror, the infected man picks up one of the severed fingers, bites into it, and then spits it out. Acting fast, Jim grabs a toaster and smashes it over Mr. Lin's head before things can escalate further. Without wasting any more time, Jim grabs his phone and runs as Mr. Lin starts to get back on his feet. Outside, Jim quickly wraps his injured hand with a cloth he finds on a parked motorcycle. Just then, he witnesses a group of infected people viciously attacking a young man, and he takes off running again. Finally, Jim makes it to his motorcycle and attempts to start the engine quietly trying not to draw attention from the nearby infected. Unfortunately, the noise alerts them, and he quickly revs the engine, speeding away as they begin to chase him. Meanwhile, Kat is on a train heading to work, quietly engrossed in a novel. Her peace is interrupted when a businessman strikes up a conversation, persistently distracting her and leaving her feeling annoyed. She warns him that she'll report him to the police if he doesn't stop, which clearly offends him. Ignoring him, Kat stands up and lets another passenger take her seat. Just then, 
chaos erupts as an infected passenger begins stabbing others, quickly turning the train into a scene of horrific violence. The other passengers manage to subdue the first infected man, but soon after, another infected person starts attacking the commuters with a knife. It doesn't take long for more people to become infected, viciously biting off chunks of flesh from their victims. Meanwhile, the girl Cat had given her seat to is suddenly stabbed in the eye by the businessman, prompting Cat to do her best to keep her calm. In the midst of the chaos, when the train doors finally open, the passengers rush to escape. Unfortunately, Cat accidentally leaves her phone behind in the rush. She makes it out with another passenger, Molly, who insists they need to get away quickly. However, Cat refuses to leave Molly behind, insisting they must get to the hospital together. Unfortunately, the businessman catches up to Cat and Molly, forcing them to run for their lives. They encounter a commuter and plead for his help, but in a shocking turn, the businessman bites off the man's nose and brutally kills him with an axe. With no time to waste, Cat and Molly flee, managing to escape the subway just as a subway worker closes the door behind them. Angered that the worker didn't assist them, Molly strikes him without hesitation. Cat then asks the worker for directions to the hospital, and he agrees to accompany them there. Meanwhile, Jim struggles to hold back his nausea as he navigates the streets filled with dead bodies. His horror escalates when he sees a man violating a corpse, prompting him to speed away in revulsion. Jim needs to take a break, feeling dizzy from blood loss. He examines his injury and rewraps his hand with a cloth, using tape to secure it and help slow the bleeding. Checking his phone for any messages from Cat, he spots a sickle lying on the side of the road and picks it up. Moments later, he witnesses a group of infected boys mercilessly beating a man with baseball bats. The kids seem to be enjoying the cruel game, which prompts Jim to intervene. He rushes in and takes down two of the boys, who, realizing they can't compete with him, quickly run away. After freeing the man, Jim tries to help him, only to discover that the man is also infected and surprisingly having fun, enjoying the violence. Before long, the boys come back, this time hurling stones at Jim, forcing him to make a hasty escape. Meanwhile, at the hospital, people watch a civil emergency message on the television. When Cat, Molly, and the subway worker arrive, the police officers stationed at the entrance allow them inside, and a nurse rushes over to tend to an injured patient. However, one of the officers informs Cat that the emergency room is overwhelmed. The nurse then tries to take Molly away for treatment, but Molly adamantly refuses to leave without Cat. In an effort to reassure her, Cat comforts Molly, who expresses her gratitude, saying she'll always remember how Cat saved her life. Eventually, Molly agrees to go with the nurse, while Cat returns to the waiting area alongside the subway worker. Cat suddenly realizes that her phone is gone and asks the subway worker if she can use his cell phone to call Jim. At the same time, the president of Taiwan addresses the public, assuring everyone that the government is working hard to find a solution to the crisis. Meanwhile, a general announces that they are facing a contagious disease that turns ordinary people into violent beings. He warns that the infected will kill, assault, and torture others, urging everyone to adhere to the guidelines set by the Ministry of Homeland Security. Unfortunately, the general soon displays signs of infection, and suddenly he attacks the president before blowing his head off with a grenade. After that, chaos erupts in the waiting area as patients begin to panic and turn on each other. The police struggle to regain control of the situation. Meanwhile, Cat gets into a scuffle with the subway worker when she refuses to give back his phone. In the midst of this, she spots the businessman outside, prompting her to grab the subway worker's phone and flee through the stairwell. Unfortunately, as she escapes, the businessman brutally kills a police officer with his axe while forcing his way into the hospital, sending everyone into a frenzy. Before long, more infected individuals burst in and start attacking the patients. In the chaos, the subway worker hides beneath a gurney, ignoring Molly, who is left alone in the hallway. Tragically, the businessman discovers Molly and violently assaults her. Meanwhile, Jim finally gets a message from Cat on the subway worker's phone. She informs him that she lost her phone and is at NTU Hospital. He quickly calls her back, reassuring her that he's on his way and urging her to stay calm. Jim advises Cat to find a safe place to hide, but during their conversation, he begins to show signs of infection. 
Despite this, he gathers himself and assures Kat that he will reach the hospital soon. Moments later, the subway worker emerges from his hiding spot and looks for an escape route from the hospital. However, he encounters an infected Molly. Unfortunately, she sees him when he accidentally makes a noise, and several infected individuals quickly overpower him. In a shocking turn, Molly brutally kills him with a piece of hospital equipment. Meanwhile, Kat is forced to flee and barricades the hallway doors to protect herself from two infected patients and the businessman. Despite her efforts, the businessman manages to break through the doors and continues to pursue Kat, taunting her with details of the horrific acts he committed against Molly. Refusing to become the businessman's next victim, Kat surprises him from behind and brutally kills him by smashing his head in. Just then, a man opens the door to the maternity ward next to her, and she quickly slips inside the room to avoid the pursuing infected. Inside, the man, who introduces himself as Dr. Wong, points a gun at Kat and demands that she cuff herself to the shower pipe. He then turns on the shower, explaining that the liquid is a chemical disinfectant. After a moment, he realizes that Kat appears uninfected and speculates that she might be immune, asking about her blood type. Wong then switches off the shower and instructs Kat to undress so he can confirm she isn't infected. With no other option, Kat begins to remove her clothes, taking care to keep the subway worker's phone concealed from the doctor. Once Kat is completely undressed, Wong turns the shower back on, and she struggles to suppress a scream as the cold chemical solution makes contact with her skin. Meanwhile, Jim finally arrives at the hospital. Back in the ward, Wong removes Kat's cuffs and allows her to get dressed, apologizing for scaring her with his 3D printed gun. He then explains that he's been trying to warn people about the Alvin virus for a whole year, but sadly, no one trusts doctors anymore. Wong elaborates on how the virus affects the limbic system in the brain, suggesting that its mutation occurred through natural processes. He also expresses his belief that the infected people probably understand that what they're doing is vile, but the desire is too strong for them to resist. In summary, Wong tells Kat that the virus drives infected individuals to commit the most horrific acts imaginable. After explaining the situation, Wong informs Kat that she needs to undergo a blood test. Kat quickly stashes her clothes and the subway worker's phone in the dumpster, but then she hears a baby crying. Intrigued, she opens the dumpster and discovers an infected baby inside. However, before she can process this shocking sight, Wong injects her with a sample of the Alvin virus and cuffs her to the shower. He then pulls the shower curtain closed and proceeds to kill the baby, telling Kat that they will head to the rooftop if she shows no signs of infection, as he intends to use her to develop a vaccine. He warns her that he won't hesitate to kill her if she becomes infected. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Kat still has the subway worker's phone, but it's locked with a passcode. Wong then confesses that he injected the eight infants he found in the ward with the virus, hoping that one of them might produce valuable antibodies. He justifies his actions by saying that the infected would have killed those babies if they had found them, claiming he made the most logical decision available to him. Meanwhile, Kat manages to figure out the phone's passcode and opens it to send a message to Jim. As she does this, Jim receives her message and drops his phone in surprise before heading toward the maternity ward. A few minutes later, Wong receives a text notifying him that the helicopter coming to pick him up will arrive in five minutes. He prepares to leave and checks on Kat. Kat firmly assures him that she isn't sick, and before long, they start to exit the ward together. As they make their way down the hallway, Kat realizes that the businessman's axe is missing. Suddenly, one of the infected patients from earlier attacks severs a portion of Wong's foot, which forces him to shoot the attacker in the head. He then shoots a second infected individual twice after vomiting from the pain of his injury. In his weakened state, Wong instructs Kat to assist him in standing, insisting that she won't be able to access the rooftop without his help. Kat helps him walk, but they are soon confronted by an infected Jim. Wong fires at Jim, but during Kat's struggle, the bullet strikes Jim in the neck. Unfortunately, when Wong tries to fire again, his gun misfires, giving Kat a chance to grab his keys. Meanwhile, Jim attacks Wong with his sickle, and just before he can finish the doctor off, Wong admits that he took pleasure in killing the babies. With no time to waste, Kat quickly unlocks the gate to the rooftop, leaving Jim furious. 
She then asks him how it feels to be infected, to which Jim responds that it feels amazing. He explains that he has found a new purpose in life, but when Kat inquires about what that purpose is, he chillingly replies that it's to mutilate her body and crush her face. Realizing that her boyfriend is beyond redemption, Kat begins to cry. However, Kat soon starts laughing uncontrollably, likely a sign that she is psychologically shattered by everything she has endured, and also that she is infected. She rushes to the rooftop just as the helicopter arrives, but it isn't long before Jim hears a series of gunshots, suggesting that she has been shot and killed. Leaning against the stairwell gate, Jim also dies with a grin on his face. And that's how the movie ends. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more recaps. See you in the next one.